Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 Psychon Guides. Today we are coming back with astonishingly other 10 tips that I wish I knew when I was starting XCOM 2. This is the fourth installment of the series 10 tips I wish I knew. I'm trying to just convey as much interesting information in very condensed forms for you so that you can improve your gameplay and have an easier time to just go through the actual game so without further ado let's get into the game and see which tips we do have available today and it wouldn't be a 10 tips video if i wouldn't have brought a friend of mine today archie the archon is joining us and archie does have a couple of tips Today's episode is more movement and position related tips that might interest you. So let's uh, take a look at tip number one, which is spawn camping. If you have ever had the situation where reinforcements were coming in and you might have already cleared out uh, the existing enemies, uh, then spawn camping is a fun little leisure activity. However, you always want to optimize that. Um, one way of doing it is bringing a Ranger or Templar with Bladestorm that you can nicely place on top of the Red Flare and then the reinforcements will just land around him. Bonus points because you are going to get three to four uh, attacks off of them by a Bladestorm. If you do have the Ranger's Rashi, it won't uh, miss. Uh, the Templar itself wouldn't miss either. Keep in mind though that this is a bit dangerous because there could be, of course, the dreaded uh, purifier and they can explode. It's not as problematic with a Templar who does have Fortress, but it is quite problematic with a Ranger who typically doesn't have that. Another way of spawn camping is a Overwatch focused uh, specialist build. I talked about that in the last 10 tips episode. If you want to give it a look, uh, then there is a tip for you. Bonus tip, uh, Rangers and Templars that are standing there with Bladestorm can also go on Overwatch. The Ranger in particular benefits from it because they will shoot with their shotgun and also on top of it use their melee weapon to have two quasi Overwatch related activities. Let's look into tip number two, which refers to missions like the Black Side or Dark VIP missions. Some of you might know that, some of you may not, but uh, those missions actually have a hidden trigger. With the Black Side, it is the pickup of the Black Side vial. Then with the Dark VIP mission, it is knocking them unconscious. Both of that always triggers reinforcements, uh, which will come at the end of the turn. So. Unfortunately, from time to time, that means you're just charging in, getting the black side vial at the end of your turn, or trying to knock down the VIP at the end of your turn. That's exactly wrong. What you should do is you should move up, clear everything um, if possible, then move as far as you can, uh, then uh, take the vial and or uh, make the VIP unconscious and wait for the reinforcements to come up. It's a complete game changer. If you haven't done it so far, it will change everything for you. Which then brings us to tip number three, which I call control pathing. You might not have known it so far, but you can actually uh, determine where and how your characters are moving, never needing to break uh, that pesky pesky window and therefore losing concealment. Just hit control and use right clicks and you can create a path. If you're playing on a console, apparently it's the X slash A key, whatever that is. I assume it's the joystick, uh, but you need to find it out. So it definitely works uh, there as well. Control pathing is essential and really, really good. And I would highly recommend you get familiar with it because you can later also use it in order to line of sight uh, path. Uh, and make sure that you are basically avoiding overwatches or make sure that you are basically uh, staying completely out of line of sight. Both can be incredibly instrumental on higher levels of play, so learn it and embrace it. Which neatly brings us to tip number four, one that the OGs that played normal uh, XCOM 2 might know. Now, there is a change in how Overwatch worked between Vanilla and War of the Chosen. Depending on the version that you're using, you may or may not want to use the rule. 
In vanilla, what you could do is you could take a single step without uh, triggering overwatch. It was called the one step rule. So as uh, long as you're just taking one step, it wouldn't trigger overwatch. The developers thought in War of the Chosen that that was, was a little bit lame and uh, was not giving Overwatch uh, builds enough leverage. So they changed it with War of the Chosen. So now a single step will still trigger Overwatch. However, I will say pro tip there. If you stay out of line of sight, the first step into line of sight will not trigger Overwatch. So that's really your solution there. Make sure that you use control pathing that I just talked about and then come in via the um, most out, outmost uh, cover that is not in line of sight. If that makes sense, if you're doing it, you can avoid overwatch altogether. Tip number five, sticking with the overwatch theme. We're looking at overwatch penalties that may or may not uh, be known to you. So whenever you overwatch, the normal standard overwatch does have a penalty, uh, which uh, is 0 0.7. So normal movement means whatever hit chance you're having, it's multiplied by 0 0.7 and that is your actual chance of hitting the target. However, if someone is double moving, it's actually multiplied by 0 0.6. So 60% of the value of your hit chance, say if you had 100%, that would be 60. Uh, if you have over 100%, it actually will go up all of uh, all the way to 100%. Uh, so if you rock in around 144, uh, you cannot miss overwatch shots anymore. Another neat feature is that Overwatch done from concealment has no aim penalty whatsoever. So that is unlike normal Overwatching, the first kind of Overwatch series is for free, allowing kind of those neat little Overwatch traps. That then brings us to tip number six, which I would call spotting packs via explosives. So packs that stand or enemies in general that stand next to an explosive will always prompt the option to set that explosive on fire and therefore deal damage. That includes faceless ones that you haven't yet seen, but that also includes packs that are outside of your vision range and whilst kind of the container is still within your vision range. So whenever you see an explosive uh, crate that you can shoot through, make sure that you are well aware of it because that means that there will be a pack. It's a great way of situational awareness to find packs where you typically wouldn't know that they are there. That neatly brings us to the next tip where we are looking at movement indicators. So tip number seven is movement indicators. Many people don't know how to use them properly. Movement indicators um, can appear after one round of non-combat, so to speak, and they will give you the direction and also the distance of the next pack uh, uh, compared to your position. However, many do not read them uh, very well. So movement indicators sometimes come with a sound cue telling you at least one alien within the pack. Their direction or, uh, already indicates the direction of the next pack from your position. And the density of the lines indicates how the proximity of that pack is towards your uh, current position. So the denser the lines, the more proximity the enemy pack has. And in many cases, you are seeing very, very uh, dense lines. And that means that the enemy pack is on either a lower or higher elevation. So read the movement indicators correctly and you will have an easier time figuring out where enemy packs are. Tip number eight, we'll look into XCOM stealth. XCOM, despite whatever you think the game is, is not a stealth or roguelike game. XCOM 2 is a combat simulator or tactical game. It has always been designed to be action packed and the whole concealment uh, mechanic is simply an entryway to get an easier first engagement. The, the reason why that is, is because there is a hard-coded mechanic where the engine will make sure that at any point during the mission, 
your current position of the closest operative and the position of the uh, mission objective will have at least one pack in between them so that you kind of naturally move into them. With the introduction of the Reaper class, however, that became a little bit wishy-washy because all of a sudden there isn't a typical class that can be easily spotted out. So what is happening is whenever you are getting too close to, a, uh, to the target and you're basically bypassing a pack, that pack will try to rush in or another pack will come in effectively making it more difficult for you because all of a sudden you are going to um, run into the situation that you are fighting more than one pack. You cannot just self the um, game because the game at any point knows exactly where your operatives are and as such will um, use that knowledge to their advantage. So Proceed at your own risk because it essentially means that uh, you uh, will be spotted out at some point. There we go. We directly jump into tip number nine, which is all about evac zones. Evac zones oftentimes uh, see an underutilization, but that is incorrect because evac zones are saving lives. Did you know that if you do have a poisoned or dying operative or an operative that is hopelessly outnumbered and will not uh, find a cover position, then all you can do is in most of the missions call in the Sky Ranger move the operative into the evac zone and do one more action before you can evac. Any uh, evac soldier will be immediately cured from all of its status effects that includes burning poison and so on and so forth. However, you cannot place an evac zone on top of your already existing operative's position. So keep that in mind. Also evac zones, uh, some areas, specifically the ones that are underground or under um, kind of a structure will not be evacable. But generally speaking, once you do understand how to evac, you can use that to your advantage. Have you ever had a situation where you fight an incredibly hard transition uh, tran transit store mission? And you generally would be able to fight through it and kill all enemies, but the timing is just off. How about you use your Reaper, you go behind enemy lines, you let them uh, go to the transistor, you're uh, placing the C4, throwing uh, the evac zone right uh, next to the door, and you're basically moving them out, uh, evacing them into safety, whilst the other five operatives are finishing the mission. So that's an easy way of doing it, just pointing it out, evac zones save lives. Which, last but certainly not least, brings us to tip number 10. Tip number 10 is cursor fishing. What does that actually mean? I'm using it quite a lot and it is a great option for you to get more information than you typically should get. Advent operatives take up space even if you cannot see them. So, if you mouse over an area that is in the fog of war and theoretically one of your operatives can move into that area, and all you need to do is to go through each of the fields and you will see that whenever a field is skipped, that field is officially blocked. There can be two explanations for that. Either there is a blocking element such as cover or there is an advent hiding there. Once you know the tile sets well enough and have played the game for long enough, you know exactly where the cover is located. So you will therefore also know that anything outside of the normal cover automatically indicates that there is a enemy pack. Bonus points if you do have someone with uh, Bladestorm and you're just charging in, uh, getting those sweet, sweet uh, Bladestorm triggers off whilst the enemy is scouring for some, uh, for some cover. That's it. That was tip number 10, Cursor Fishing. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let me know in the comments down below which of the tips was most helpful or surprised you the most. And also, if you are wanting to uh, uh, reciprocate a little bit of the value that you got out of this video, consider dropping a like bomb because that really helps the video. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. And I hope the 10 tips always help you to improve your gameplay. Take care. Bye-bye.